All right, welcome back everybody to another video. My name is Danny Schaefer and today we're going to be talking about the enchantments in Washington State. Specifically, we're going to be talking about tips that will aid in making your trip, you know, whether it's a day or through hiking trip or even backpacking, extremely successful and enjoyable. First, I'd just like to add a quick backstory and side note to aid in explaining where these tips are really stemming from. Uh, so back in late June of 2020, my girlfriend Tess and I, we were lucky enough to snag a permit for the core zone of the enchantments. Um, we completed the entire route and ultimately compiled a list, this list, of things that we really enjoyed about the trip that others may value. Uh, and also there were some things that we totally would have done different. So all those are going to be kind of compiled in this list and tips video, and I hope you're really going to enjoy it. Um, so prior to that trip, I had been to Kolchak Lake twice, both in the summer and the winter. So I've seen the trail a few times. I'd like to say that these tips and ideas are all from personal experience, and all in all are opinions that may help you have a successful trip. Recently, I completed a six video series of our complete trip to the enchantments. Each video details a different leg of the journey, such as hiking to Kolchak and Stewart Lakes, climbing Asgard Pass, trekking through the core zone, etc, etc, you get the point. I'll throw a link to the playlist in the upper right hand corner here and add links to in the description below for all the videos for anyone interested. Also if you would, be sure to subscribe to the channel below by clicking that red box and above. I really appreciate the, any support you could give. Uh, so without further ado, let's get into the video. Okay, so tip number one is going to be begin at the Kolchuk and Stewart Lakes Trailhead. So the entire route of the enchantments from trailhead to trailhead is roughly 18 to 21 miles depending on who you ask and what literature you read. Personally, we tracked 27.8 miles of hiking since we took off to Stewart Lake for a side trip when we met the fork in the junction with Kolchuk Lake along the first few miles of the trek. Stewart Lake provided some great views, but compared to the rest of the range, it wasn't in our top five scenery-wise, necessarily. If you've researched the enchantments before, you'd know that the entire route is a point-to-point -point trail, meaning there's two options for trailheads to begin at. One being the Snow Lakes Trailhead, which is the lower of the two off of Icicle Creek Road out of Leavenworth, not all that far from town. The second being the Kolchuk Lake and Stewart Lakes Trailhead, which is the higher or greater in elevation trailhead of the two. My best advice for hiking the entire route is to 100% start at the Kolchuk and Stewart Lakes Trailhead. So here's some stats and facts for you stats and facts people. So the trailhead for Kolchuk and Stewart Lakes is 3,220 feet in elevation, and the trailhead for Snow Lakes is 1,400 feet in elevation. If you subtract the two, that's nearly 2,000 feet in elevation difference. So it's obvious that if you start from the upper trailhead, overall you'll be climbing less and going downhill more, which I think we can all appreciate. Starting at the Kolchuk and Stewart Lakes trailhead also makes it so you tackle Asgard Pass early on when you're still feeling somewhat fresh and spry. Tess and I both agreed that we would have hated going down Asgard. We also agreed that starting at the lower trailhead for snow lakes and climbing up would have been brutal, more tiring, drawn out, and less enjoyable. We were both on the same page for this tip to begin at the Kolchuk and Stewart Lakes trailhead. Okay, so tip number two is going to be getting from trailhead to trailhead when you only have one vehicle. So as previously mentioned, the enchantments have two different starting points, either the Kolchuk and Stewart Lakes Trailhead or the Snow Lakes Trailhead. If you're doing the point to point or through hike, you'll be starting at one trailhead and finishing at the other. So you're going to need a way to get back to your vehicle once completed. So first you have a few not so desirable options to get back to your car, but hey, maybe they'll work for you. So number one, you can hike back to the other trailhead. You know, it's only 7.9 more miles. What's a few more, you know, under your belt? Uh, number two, you can stash bicycles at the trailhead you're going to finish at and then ride them back to your car. Again, I mean, maybe, hey, maybe it'll work for you. If I were to do that, I would totally start at the lower trailhead to hike and then stash my bikes at the upper trailhead to finish at. So then when you finish, you can ride downhill back to your car. 
Number three is to hitchhike your way back. Uh, you know, we remember passing a lot of hitchhikers and personally we didn't ever stop and we saw a lot of other people zoom by them. Who knows, maybe you'll luck out and maybe you'll find some safe, friendly folks to drive you back. So the best way that we found was to schedule a shuttle using Leavenworth, Shuttle, and Taxi. The night before we arrived, we called and scheduled a ride with them to pick us up at the Snow Lakes Trailhead at 7 a.m. To our surprise, actually, they arrived early at 6.45, and so we were on the road before we knew it. As previously mentioned, the drive is about 8 miles long, and it took us 20 to 25 minutes to arrive. So now let's talk about cost. The price was a little bit steep for not a very long ride, but with the rough roads and the extreme convenience, I'd say it was well worth the $50 plus the tip for the ride from trailhead to trailhead. Hiring the shuttle made it so nice to, to finish the Enchantments hike with our car waiting for us in the parking lot at the Snow Lakes Trailhead. I'll include a link to the Leavenworth Shuttle and Taxis website down below in the description for anyone interested in checking them out. Okay, so tip number three may be an easy one, but here it goes. This one's all going to be about keeping the bugs off your back. Bring your bug spray. So when Tess and I took off on our little side trip to Stewart Lake, we stashed our packs behind a giant boulder so we wouldn't have to haul our heavy packs three miles there and three miles back again. Uh, we did bring a fanny pack with us though and filled it with snacks so we could replenish once we arrived. You can probably guess the one item we forgot to bring on our little side trip, bug spray. So when we arrived at the lake around 9 a.m. when it was just starting to warm up, I swear the mosquitoes decided to wake up around that time too because we got swarmed. These buggers can get you through your clothing and are absolutely relentless. I think by the time we arrived back to our packs, we had already counted 11 bites on the back of my neck. You can be sure that we sprayed up as soon as we were able to. So we really found that the mosquitoes were only an issue at the lower elevation lakes such as Stewart Lake, Kolchuk Lake, and Snow Lakes. In the core zone of the enchantments when we were there in late June at least, we didn't really have an issue. So the bug spray that we used and that we found to be successful was this 98% DEET spray that we got from REI. You don't have to go with the REI stuff, it's all the same, you get the point. There's not much in the little bottles but it lasted us the entire trip and the mosquitoes really hated the stuff. We also purchased mosquito netting for our heads and faces that did an excellent job of keeping the bugs away as well. Mosquito netting paired with the 98% DEET spray will be sure to send the bugs to the next campsite. Okay, so tip number four is going to be all about Asgard Pass. What is there to say about Asgard Pass? Those of you who are watching this video are probably somewhat familiar with it, but let's talk some quick facts before we get into this one. Asgard Pass is without a doubt one of the most well-known climbs in all of Washington State. It's one of two ways into the core zone of the enchantments and by far the most popular compared to hiking up and through snow lakes. For the purpose of this tip, we'll be talking about Asgard as if you were hiking it from the Kolchak side. Individuals flock from all over the country to tackle Asgard because when completed, one feels accomplished. Climbing a whopping 2,000 vertical feet in elevation in about three quarters of a mile is without a doubt a feat and it's invigorating. This is the closest you'll be to the towering peak known as Dragon Tail, unless you were to summit it of course. You can see pictures online all day of it, but until you're on the trail of Asgard, you will never understand how absolutely massive it is. Dragon Tail has a prominence of 1,760 feet above Kolchak Lake. Asgard Pass sits directly to the east of Dragon Tail, or if looking across from Kolchak Lake, it sits to the left. Conquering Asgard Pass comes with its challenges, and if not prepared, you could find yourself in a rough situation. One must be in exceptional physical condition to make it to the top, and should condition appropriately beforehand prior to attempting it. Route finding is especially important for Asgard. To get there, one must hike to the southern end of Kolchuk Lake and hop a large boulder field to eventually get to the base. Be sure to follow the rock stacks or the cairns to find your way. Cairns are literally everywhere if you pay close attention to your surroundings. The number one and best tip I can personally provide is to stay left. Stay left, stay left, and stay left. 
The trail weaves up and to the left, and essentially you stay away from the massive protrusion of Dragon Tail Peak. If you were to look at pictures of Asgard Pass, you'll notice a large group of trees clumped together about halfway up the climb, an island of trees if you will. Even here the trail weaves to the left of the trees and continues up from there. We found a couple of spots around here to fill up our water bottles along the way, and my best advice would be to capitalize on filling up your water every time if given the chance. The whole trail up is a thigh burning switch backing experience, and it seems like it just goes and goes. So you want to be sure that you're prepared for whatever mother nature throws at you. This mountain is unforgiving and having the proper equipment is a must. In the summertime, trekking poles would be a huge help, especially if one were to descend Asgard. If you're to tackle Asgard in the winter, an ice axe, rope, and crampons are a few things to definitely consider bringing. With a quick Google search, you can find that there have been a number of deaths on the pass in recent years. A contributing factor from what I've seen is that individuals have strayed from the main trail, especially in winter months, and a lot of times the incident occurs upon descent. Winter comes early in these mountains, and many times snow can be found in mid to late October and can stick around all the way to June or even July. From what I've read, many of the incidents that have occurred are from individuals glissading down Asgard Pass, and subsequently they fell into a 15 to 30 foot deep crevasse or waterfall hole with freezing glacier water running down on them. So please, if you're going to hike and climb Asgard Pass and are not experienced in mountaineering, do it in the summer months when snow is minimal or non-existent, and always be sure to just stick to the trail. So with that, this leads me to the next tip and a personal story of nearly getting stuck on the pass in winter conditions. So tip number five is going to be know your route like the back of your hand. I mentioned earlier in the video that I had been to Kolchuk Lake in the winter before. My buddies and I planned a three day backpacking trip to the core zone in early November of 2018. I believe it was November 7th. So we thought, hey, if we wait until November, then technically we won't need a permit to stay overnight. Well, there's a reason why the permits end come November. It was winter there. Temperatures were in the low teens, and it was a completely different season than what it was when we left the trailhead. We camped the first night at Colchuck, and all in all, we actually did pretty well despite how cold it was. The second morning, we packed up camp, and our plan was to hike Asgard Pass and camp somewhere in the core zone. We never made it. We attempted it, but we never made it. The previous day when we arrived at Kolchuk Lake, we talked to some fellow hikers and told them our plan. A lady who seemed experienced and convincing enough told us that to hike Asgard Pass in the winter, and at this time of year, we needed to take the winter route, and that consisted of climbing the right side of Asgard Pass as opposed to the left. Now, I'm a research nerd, and in the back of my mind, I knew we were supposed to climb Asgard on the left side. When we arrived at the base of Asgard Pass to climb it the next morning, we had trouble finding the actual trail. So we took her advice and we started climbing up the right side. This footage that I'm showing was the last bit that I filmed because it became dangerous as we continued to ascend. We had micro spikes on our boots, but that was it. No ice axe, no poles, nothing else, just our egos and inexperience. <laughs> We got approximately one third of the way up the pass when we noticed we were climbing over a frozen waterfall. We were high up. If that snow would have broke or if one of us would have slipped, who knows what would have happened. I hate to actually think about it. Thankfully, we were able to turn around and safely make it down. This is why I was so adamant on the last tip to keep left on the trail on Asgard Pass. So that was my experience, but it seems like a lot of times individuals just get lost on the trails in the enchantments as well. It happened just last summer 2020 when a couple of girls were through hiking the enchantments and lost their way in the core zone. Instead of traveling east towards Snow Lakes, they went north over Prusik Pass and search and rescue eventually located them way off the trail near Earl Lake, which is pretty far off the main trail of the core zone of the enchantments. Again, these mountains are unforgiving. You have to know your routes and trails before attempting the enchantments. So that pretty much sums it up. That's my top five list of tips 
for hiking and backpacking the enchantments. But before we end the video, let's fire off seven 10 second tips. Here we go, number one. So there are multiple pit toilets along the trail of the entire enchantments. Use them if possible. Quick tip number two, don't pee near or in your camp because you may get a nice mountain goat to come in and lick up all that salt you've been eating. 10 second tip number three, stay at Nada Lake. In our opinions, it's prettier, less populated, warmer, and more protected than snow lakes. 10 second tip number four, submit for your permit to backpack in the enchantments for the upcoming season sometime between February 15th and March 1st on www.recreation.gov's website. 10 second tip number five, make sure to bring the 10 essentials for the entire trip. I'll put the list right here on the screen. 10 second tip number six, get to your trailhead early, early, early. The increasing popularity of the enchantments is beginning to overcrowd the parking lots. Don't park on the road leading up to the trailhead for Kolchuk and Stewart, or you may be sighted. 10 second tip number seven, look around, enjoy the view. The enchantments has truly earned its name. Put the phone down, put the camera down, just take it in and enjoy it. And that's it. Thank you everyone so much for watching this video. I hope it helps anyone looking to tackle the enchantments for themselves. Summer of 2021 is right around the corner. Again, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. I appreciate all the support. Let me know if you have any tips of your own down in the comment section. We'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks again.